This tutorial series will teach you everything you need in order to get a good foundation for your platformer game. On the screen, you can see the end result. The map is being drawn out of tiles and uses the love.physics module for collision detection. We have a player that is able to move around and jump. There are spikes and enemies that we need to avoid, as well as coins that can be collected. Thanks to the physics module, we have objects like this stone, that we can push onto spikes and use as a safe platform. There is also a system for multiple levels. When I reach the end of this level, it gets cleared out and a new one is loaded. While this is a beginner guide, there are a few things that you need before you can get started. The framework that we will be using is called Love. If you don't know what that is, then you should check out my introduction video to Love. It covers installation and how to set up your first project. If you have little to no previous Lua programming knowledge, it would also be beneficial to check out my crash course in Lua. Both of these videos are very short and you will be ready to get started in no time. If you are already familiar with Lua, Love or programming in general, then we can move on. All you need to have in order to be able to follow along is a main.lua file that contains the three base love callback functions, love.load, update and draw. Next you need a conf file. Inside the conf file I have set the window size to be 1280 by 720 pixels, enabled the developer console, named the game platformer, specified that the love version that we will use is 11.3 and disabled vsync. I also have a folder named Assets, which contains all of the assets that I intend to use in this tutorial series. There is a link in the description where you can download the files, though I recommend creating your own. Before we start coding, we need to create a level. To do this we are going to use a program called Tiled. It is a completely free tile map editor. Head over to mapeditor.org and download the latest version. After you have installed and opened it, you should be greeted by this screen. Click on create a new map and a new window will pop up where we can configure our map. Orientation sets the perspective for the tiles. We want to set it to be orthogonal. No, not ornithological. This makes it so that our tiles are all squares. The tile layer format should be CSV, which sets the file structure for the exported map. Next make sure that tile render order is set to write down. Now we need to set the width and height of the map in an amount of tiles. To calculate the size that we should use, we need to take three variables into consideration. First, the size of the tiles in our tileset. In this case, it's 16 by 16 pixels. Second, the resolution of the window, which I set in conf.lua to be 1280 by 720 pixels. Third, the scale, which we will set to be 2x, since the assets are made using pixel art and look better when you zoom in a bit. To get the width in tiles, we divide the window width, 1280, by the tile width, 16, and then divide it by the scale, 2. The result in this case is 40. For the height, we do the same thing. Divide the height of the window, 720, by the height of the tile, 16, and divide that by the scale, 2, which leaves us with 22.5. We can't have half tiles, so I will round it up to 23. Now we can go ahead and save the file. To keep our project organized, I will create a new folder inside of our project folder, named map. I will create another folder and name it tmx. When we work with tile, we need to have two different files for each map. tmx is a file format that the program tiled uses in order to save and load your maps. When we want our game to read the map, we need to export it as a Lua file. The reason we need to keep the tmx files is to be able to go back and change the map later down the line as tiled can't load the Lua file. Now we can go ahead and save the map into our newly created tmx folder. I will name it 1.tmx because it will be the first map in the game. Tiled is a very modular program. You can move different elements around, hide them and even make them pop out into a separate window. If you accidentally mess things up, you can always return to the default layout setting by pressing view in the top left corner, then views and toolbar, and clicking on reset to default layout. The program may seem a bit intimidating at first, but you won't need all of the features and I will cover the ones that we need as we go along. Before we can create our map, we need some assets to use. These are called tile sets and usually contain multiple tiles in one file. I have a tile set named tiles in the asset folder. 
Before we can use the tiles, we need to import the tileset into Tiled. To do this, click the button named New Tileset in the bottom right corner, and a pop-up window will appear. First, click the Browse button and navigate to the tileset that you want to use and open it. Make sure to check the Embedded in Map checkbox. This ties the tileset to the map and makes it available immediately. Now make sure that the tile size is correct. If your tileset has a margin before the tiles begin, or if they are spaced out, then you should set those values as well. I will leave them at zero, since the tileset I will use doesn't have that. Make sure that Use Transparent Color is not checked. This can be used to chroma key out a specific color, though you really should use a PNG file with actual transparency instead. Now press OK, and as you can see, the tileset has appeared in the bottom right corner. I can now click on a tile to select it and place it on the map. The tiles are quite small, so I will zoom in on them by holding down the control key and scrolling on my mouse wheel, while my mouse cursor is on the tileset window. The same thing can be done in the actual map window. To move around, you can hold down the mouse wheel button and move your mouse, or use the arrow keys. Before we start placing out the tiles, we should create some additional tile layers. Otherwise, if I place out a couple of tiles and then want to add some grass on top of it, I'd just end up replacing the existing tiles with grass tiles. First, I will rename the tile layer 1 to something more suitable, for example ground. Then I will create a new tile layer by right-clicking the window and selecting Tile Layer. I will name it Grass. Make sure that the grass layer is above the ground layer, otherwise it will draw the grass behind the tiles. Holding Shift and left-clicking will enable you to draw a line with your selected tiles. Simply click again to place them out. To get rid of a selection of tiles, you simply right-click. If you make mistakes, there is an eraser tool, which you can use to delete tiles. You can also undo by pressing Ctrl Z and redo with Ctrl Y. This is enough for us to actually start implementing the map into our game. So let's go ahead and save the file. We also need to export it as a Lua file. Press File in the top left corner and select Export As. Select Lua files in the drop down menu and save the file as 1.lua. I will save it in the root of the maps folder. In order for us to load this map file, we are going to use a library. You can think of libraries as add ons that implement features that Love does not have natively. In my opinion, it's best to try to keep the amount of libraries that you use to a minimum, especially when starting out. However, there are certain times when it's unnecessary to reinvent the wheel. In this case, we will use a library made by my friend Karai17, called Simple Tile Implementation, or STI for short. I will link to the GitHub page in the description. Simply press the green button named Code and download it as a zip file. We only need the folder named STI, so copy it over to your project folder. Now we are ready to get the map to draw in our game. Open up your main.lua file. At the top, we are going to require STI and set it to be equal to a local variable, which I will name STI. Inside of love.load, we are going to load the map into a variable. I will name it map and set it to be equal to STI parentheses. Inside of the parentheses, we will pass in the path to the map as a string. To draw the map, we need to call mapDraw in the love.draw function. This function takes four arguments. First the x and y positions, which we will set to be zero, followed by the x and y scale. You might recall that we wanted our game to be scaled up to 200%, so we will set them to be two. If we run the game, you can see that our map is being drawn properly. Right now, we are only applying this scale to the map, which is currently the only thing that we have. Since it would be smart to fix the scaling for future stuff that we intend to add as well, we'll go ahead and do that. To do this, we will use love.graphics.scale, which takes two arguments, the x and y scale. Just like with the map, we will scale it up to 200% by passing in 2. To make sure that we can draw objects that we don't want to scale up, we should make the scaling end at a certain point. We do that by pushing and popping. Love.graphics.push saves the current transformations to the stack. Transformations means position, rotation, scale, etc. If we want to return to the state before we apply transformations, we just call love.graphics.pop. This retrieves the information from the stack and resets everything to this state. 
This means that anything drawn before the push and everything drawn after the pop will not be affected by the scaling. STI has support for the built-in physics module, love.physics, which is built on the popular physics engine Box2D. In order for STI to understand what tiles should be solid, we need to add a custom property to the layers and objects that we want to be solid. Go ahead and open up Tiled again. Personally, I prefer creating one designated collision layer. I think it's a cleaner solution. First, we will create a new object layer that I will name Solid. On this layer, I will create rectangle shapes using the Insert Rectangle tool, located in the toolbar at the top. By default, it can be difficult to see the object due to the grey color. We can change the color of the entire layer by first selecting it. Then we get an option on the left side where we can pick a different color. Now we need to tell STI that this rectangle is a solid object by creating a custom property. Select the rectangle with the selection tool, then press the little plus sign, located in the bottom left corner. STI looks for a boolean property named Collidable, so we will name it that and select bool in the drop down menu. When we press OK, a new property named Collidable appears, which has a checkbox next to it. By default it is not checked, since we want this rectangle to be solid, we will check it. Now we can copy and paste the rectangle, so that we don't have to keep repeating this process. Make sure that you cover everything that needs to be solid with a rectangle. Make sure that you save both the TMX file, as well as export a new Lua file. Now we need to open our main.lua file, and initialize the love.physics module. To do this we will add a second argument to the STI function that loads our map. Add a comma, then a table that contains the string box2d. This lets STI know that we intend to use box2d. In order for box2d to work, we need to first create a physics world. We do that by creating a variable, which I will name world, and setting it to be equal to love.physics.newworld. This function takes two arguments, the x and y velocity for the world. This could be used to, for example, create gravity. But we want to do that ourselves. Not only because we are awesome, but also because box2d tends to make it feel floaty. Therefore, we will set them to be equal to zero. Next, we will tell STI to load all of the layers and objects that have the custom property collidable into the physics world. We do that by typing map colon box2d underscore init and then parentheses. This function takes one argument, the world that you want to insert it into. In our case, that's world. If we run the game, you can see a bunch of white rectangles. This is the object layer that is being drawn. We can disable this by setting the layer's visible variable to false. We can reach the layer by typing map.layers.solid, then adding .visible and setting it to be equal to false. If we rerun the game, you can see that they are no longer visible. In order for us to be able to have things moving around in our physics world, we need to call world update in the love.update function. Otherwise, everything will be frozen, and that's a movie for kids, we're making a game. The black background is quite depressing, so let's add something more colorful. In main.lua, I will create a new variable named background, and set it to be equal to love.graphics.newImage. This function takes the path to the image that we want to load as a string. The image that I want has assets slash background.png as its file path. We can now draw the background by calling love.graphics.draw and passing in the image that we want to draw, in this case, background. This function takes up to 10 arguments, but if we don't pass anything other than the image, it will be drawn at 0, 0, which is what we want anyway. Make sure to draw the background before the map, so that it is drawn behind the map. You might have noticed that we add dt into certain functions. That stands for delta time, which is the time that it takes to produce a frame. We use this information to make the program run the same on all hardware, regardless of FPS. If you want a more in-depth explanation, delta time and a lot more is explained in the Lua Crash Course video. In the next episode, we will start working on the player character. Remember that there is a link in the description for the full source code. If you made it this far, chances are that you enjoyed the video. So consider liking and commenting. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode.